We're in Detroit. Three words that you never want to hear. However, we're in 2038. Somehow, unemployment and crime rates are even higher. The only way to fix this city would be the Lions winning the Super Bowl, but that that's never happening. So, we have androids instead. I am Connor, the most advanced android ever programmed, and I'm here to de-escalate a hostage situation. The apartment we're in is beautiful, and they even have a built-in multi-tropical freshwater aquarium. Old matey fish didn't get the message that he needs to be in the tank to survive, but as an android, I feel no empathy, so I leave the fish on the floor. I take a look around the apartment and I find a child's bedroom. Picking up her headphones, I'm expecting to hear Taylor Swift, but to my surprise, she was actually listening to Drill. Welcome to Princeton, I'm in the party with Barbies and Drillers. In the living room, I discover the father of the family has been RKO'd through the coffee table by their android servant. The hob was also left on, so now the pasta is definitely way past al dente and dinner tonight is ruined. I also find a handgun under the kitchen table, which I believe is just standard procedure in Detroit. Conflict resolution in Detroit isn't calmly speaking through your emotions, it's just whoever pulls out the handgun first wins. In the dining area, I also come across some blue Gatorade spilt on the floor, and I figure there's no use it going to waste, so we fuel up. Turns out it wasn't Gatorade, and was the blue blood from the android that's gone rogue. Speaking of the android, we step out onto a lovely terrace where the android is holding a small child hostage. Here you've got to select the right dialogue options to save the child and the android if you can. Luckily, I have excellent negotiation skills. I was shopping for a new sofa the other week on Facebook Marketplace and saw someone giving away a three-seater for free. I messaged them, asking if I could have it, and they said yes. Not everyone could have closed out that deal the way that I did. Anyway, my skills really do come in clutch here, as I eventually convinced the android to jump off the building, along with the child. I did have the option of a quick time event that could have helped me save the kid, but I could have risked pulling my hammy. As an android, a hamstring injury doesn't just mean deep tissue massages for the next few months. It means they put you in the dump. Do you know who won't leave you in the dump though? Today's sponsor, Atlas VPN. We all know that with a new year comes resolutions that you never actually fulfill. One resolution that you should make though is internet safety. And today's sponsor, Atlas VPN, are making it easier than ever for you. If you want to have a private Christmas and a safe new year, Atlas VPN Premium have got your back. You can have it for just $1.70 per month plus six months free with a 30 day back money guarantee. All you've got to do to claim this deal is just click the link in the description. Not only is it the best VPN deal on the market, but it also blocks all malicious links and ads, trackers, and notifies you when someone is trying to steal your data. It helps you save money when shopping online by making sure you get the best deals possible, including subscriptions like Netflix and Spotify, booking flights, hotels, and even more. It helps keep your Google searches private for when you're searching for those <coughs> educational videos. And it also helps keep all of your devices protected with a single subscription. My favorite feature of it all, however, is how you can access other sites that you wouldn't be able to throughout the world. So one of my friends has been badgering me for the longest time to start One Piece, but I never knew where to start as it's not on Netflix. All I have to do with Atlas VPN is change my location to somewhere in America, refresh Netflix, and there it is, all of One Piece, ready for me to watch. Remember to have a private Christmas and a safe new year with Atlas VPN. You can have it for just $1.70 per month, plus six months for free, and a 30 day money back guarantee. Click the link in the video description now and grab this deal. It's a new dawn, a new day, and we're a new android. This time I'm on a shop floor being objectified about how many different dialects I speak, bathrooms I clean, and meals I cook. Big man comes over to me smelling like grease and cigarettes. He purchases me and names me Kara, so I guess this is my new daddy, out of all the owners that could have bought me. Of course I end up getting stuck with the balding fat guy who showers once every full moon. We then switch over to get to know another android. This time it's Marcus. We're in the city to pick up some paints from the art store. As I'm walking to the store, I see a woman litter her coffee cup. I immediately turn around to rear naked choke her, but unfortunately, that's not in our programming. I arrive at the arts and crafts store and pick up some new paints for my owner, which will hopefully help him stroke it even better than before. On my way to the bus, I get assaulted by a couple of humans who have it out for me because I'm an android who took their jobs. Yes, that's correct, blame the androids for your unemployment, and not your complete lack of any employability skills. There's a dude with a man bun wailing on me. Companies probably don't want to employ him because they know HR reports for sexual misconduct will go through the roof once he's employed. So after taking a beating, I eventually make it to the back of the bus, and we switch back to Kara, who's arriving at her new gaff. I get it, this is a rough neighbourhood in Detroit, but he could at least 
least paint the walls, carpet the stairs, and get rid of the child to really bring out the best in this home. No, I'm kidding about the child thing. Alice is actually a great part of this game, because she barely talks. Children are just so much better when they stay quiet. Todd asks me to clean the downstairs by doing things like taking the bins out, mopping the floor, and washing the dishes. This was actually really nice of me to get some perspective on what it's like to be my girlfriend. While I was cleaning the living room, I heard Todd making a strange noise. I thought he was smashing out a tactical one in the living room, but no, it just turns out he was smoking that red. I nip outside to grab the laundry, and Alice watches me from the back porch. I attempt to talk to her, but the chat is drier than your mum's turkey. Leave a like if your mum's turkey is not dry. It's not very nice out. You might catch cold. I could get you a sweater if you want. Alice really needs to work on those social skills if she has any hope of being adopted at some point in the future. When I'm back inside to do some more laundry, I grab the detergent and I find some of Todd's drugs hidden inside. He proceeds to choke me against the wall, but because of his greasy fingers, this is less daddy and more I need to shower after this. One heated encounter in the laundry room later, I finish up downstairs and go to the second floor to tidy the bedrooms. In Todd's room, I find a handgun in the drawer, so you know that may come in handy later. I then go to clean the bathroom, but Todd is freshly finished taking a massive log, so I can't wait to smell his colon while I bleach every surface. Ah yes, mopping a bathroom floor. David Cage really does know how to create that incredible incredible gameplay that captivates the youth of today. Finally, it was onto Alice's room, which is already pretty tidy, so that'll be something to put in the pro section of her adoption papers. But once again, the chat is absolutely dead. She does however hand me a key to open a lockbox on her drawers which is full of drawings that she's done. The drawings contain imagery like her being beaten and Todd beating an android. Just because someone draws it however, does not mean it's true. I used to draw pictures of an erect penis, but that does not mean I can get an erection. <laughs> we check back in with Marcus to see he made it home without getting beaten by a man bun again. It's a pretty stark contrast between where he lives and where Kara lives, and his owner Carl is also a lot sweeter. Carl and Marcus have a really cute relationship where because Carl can't walk, Marcus helps him with his everyday needs. I was disappointed however that if you stop this quick time event halfway through, the game just freezes you in place. I was really hoping he would just drop Carl on the floor. We have to take him to the toilet, and unfortunately the game doesn't have a toilet cam, so I can't sneak a look at Carl's 70 year old ball sack that's probably so saggy it touches the toilet bowl. I whack Carl in his wheelchair and proceed to do a few donuts in his bedroom to pay our respects to Ken Block. We take him downstairs, serve him his favourite breakfast, and then kill some time by playing the piano. I want that jet lag from fucking and flying. Shoot a child in your mouth while I'm riding. Marcus and Carl then bond together by painting and talking about which boys they think are cute at high school. Just when Carl is about to reveal his crush, however, his son Leo then walks in. He's here for one reason only, to get some money from his dad. As if it wasn't clear by the beanie and rich father, he is indeed an addict. Carl rejects his request, and Leo starts to get angry at Marcus because he's a better son than he could ever be. I mean, I don't see Leo wiping his dad's ass and massaging his feet, so yeah, ask yourself. Who is the better son? Angrily, Leo storms out, and we check back in with Connor. We've been assigned to a case investigating a murder, but first we must find our partner who's hanging out at the local bar. I hit him with the My name is Connor. I'm the android sent by Cyberlife. And then spill his drink because he was being mean to me about my plastic android asshole. Just because it's not a fully functioning asshole doesn't make it any less valuable. Eventually, Connor and Hank rock up to the crime scene where Hank tells us to stay in the car, but of course, we don't. What part of stay in the car didn't you understand? inside and the victim has been stabbed by their android 28 times. Investigating the crime scene I find a knife that has some tasty blood on it, and a magazine announcing that android sex is officially better. And to think, Hank was insulting Connor's plastic ass earlier, but little does he know, he could be backshotting that plastic ass and having the time of his life. As it turns out, the victim was actually Ed from 90 Day Fiancé, so I'm guessing he finally gave up on finding a real woman and tried to wife an android. You're my best view. So after smelling Ed's corpse, it eventually put me on the trail of the killer, where it would take me to the loft and I would find the deviant android. Back with Kara at Todd's gaff and it's family dinner time. I'm serving up an Italian specialty. 
canned spaghetti and no World Cup qualification. Due to the lacklustre meal, Todd gets angry and flips the table, Alice runs off upstairs and he tells me to stay here. However, it was at this point we finally decide to break out of our android life and achieve free will. As I go upstairs disobeying Todd's orders, I remember I didn't wash the dishes. But no wait, we're free now, so I head to Todd's room and grab the gun. We then head to Alice's room where he's got his belt out and we're here to be the hero, but he slaps the gun out of our hands and suddenly we we're in a quick time event fight. I ace every single button input because I'm a talented gamer and we eventually end up shooting Todd. We finally escape with Alice off into the sunset. Well, it was actually into the rain onto a conveniently timed bus, but into the sunset sounds a lot more epic. Back with Carl and Marcus, where we've just arrived home after a party. However, all is not right at the house. Did you leave the light on in the studio? No, no, I'm sure I didn't. I bravely enter the studio while wheeling Carl in front of me just in case there is an assailant and he has a gun, so I can use the old man as collateral. It turns out it's just Leo again, but this time he's trying to steal Carl's art to sell. Does he know how difficult it is to move a high value piece of art without having the right connections? This isn't just the sort of thing he can whack on Etsy expecting to get his small business underway. Leo and Carl argue, and Leo eventually begins taking out his anger on Marcus. So we also break free with Marcus and take control of our lives. Carl was telling us not to fight back, but we eventually push Leo and he folds like a lawn chair onto a machine, hitting his head and dying. Carl, having literally just watched his son die right in front of him, crawls over to him and holds him in his arms while he's crying. I can't believe Carl is this much of a bitch. Anyway, because he's a good man, Carl is telling us to escape while we can, but it's too late and the cops have arrived extremely quickly because this was a crime in a rich white neighborhood. Don't fucking move! Back in Connor's plastic arse, it was time to interrogate the deviant android we found earlier. The key to a good interrogation is getting your victim stressed enough to talk, but not so stressed that they freak out. It's like that fine line between being kinky with your girl in bed and assaulting her. The deviant refuses to talk to me until I mention probing, and now he's interested. His stress levels are rising, and when I have him at the peak, I just keep pushing, and pushing, and pushing until eventually he confesses to killing his owner in self-defense. We get out of there, job done and dusted, or so I thought until the deviant begins smashing his head on the table in an attempt to self-destruct because I stressed him out too much. We get back in there and the deviant steals a gun from one of the cops, shooting Connor and himself in the head. Back with the runaway crew and we've got to find shelter for the night. Guess I didn't really think this one through as it's raining now and Alice may catch a cold. If I had have just let Todd beat her, she would be dry and sleeping on a comfortable bed tonight. With dry clothes being the priority, we head over to a dry cleaners. It lived up to its name, as there was indeed some dry clothes here. Or maybe he has fallen asleep while he put his clothes in for a 30 degree spin cycle, so we take the chance and steal them. Alice reminds us this is morally wrong, so I'm tempted to just let her freeze, but no, we do eventually steal the clothes. The game really is living up to the slogan that you can't have shit in Detroit. We slip into our new gear, and please don't question the logic that clothes from a full grown man somehow snugly fit a small child. Next thing on the list was getting some money so we could book a motor room for the night. We pop into the convenience store and the game is giving me cute ideas like getting a toy for Alice to keep her happy, but no, we're on that grind for some bread, the toys can wait. I proceed to pull a gun on the cashier and get $40 out of him. That just so happens to be the price of one room for a night which is convenient. We tuck in and get a cozy 8 hours. Or at least Alice does. I don't think androids need to sleep 8 hours to function the next day. I imagine they just slot themselves into the nearest plug socket and charge for the night. We wake up the next day and figure that as we're on the run, we need to change the way that we look so we won't be recognised as easily. We cut our hair, going from a cute ponytail to a can I see the manager haircut. Back with Connor and Hank, and we're actually at the motel as we're hunting down Kara and Alice. We find out what room they're in, but when we bust in, they're already gone. Back with Kara, we try our best to hide from the police, but are eventually seen, so we have to make a break for it. As Connor, we sprint after them, and my heart is torn. Do I catch them, or do I purposefully let them get away? Well, as it would turn out, fate would just decide for me, as we attempt to cross a highway, and this happens. Watch out, Kara! No! Ah, Jesus Christ! 
I really didn't think that would happen. I had no idea that their playthrough could end that way. If you would like to see more Detroit, let me know. A big thank you as always to those of you who have clicked the join button and become a member of the channel. Leave a like, subscribe if you enjoyed the video, all that jazzy stuff, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye. A big shout out to my motherload boys and above, Bjorn van den Hatter, Tech TTV, and Zyphin. Thank you guys for your support.